So question 3.5, let's have a look what we've got here. We've got butan 2 of, so we've got four carbons with an OH on carbon number 2, so it's a secondary alcohol because the C with the OH is in the middle of a chain connected to two other carbons either side. Reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid. Remember, concentrated sulfuric acid removes water. The way it does this is it removes the OH off a carbon, and off an adjacent carbon it takes an H. So it takes the OH off a carbon, and on the carbon next to it, either to the left or the right, it takes an H. So in that way it can produce two isomeric alkenes, two isomers with a double bond, because what it does is when it takes the OH off, if it takes the H to the left uh, and removes water, it um, leaves a double bond between those two carbons, or if it takes an OH and then removes an H to the right, it creates uh, water and really re uh, produces a double bond to the right of the uh, COH. We'll have a look at that with the mechanism in a minute. So it produces two uh, isomers, two positional isomers where the double bond is in a different position depending on which H is taken along with the OH, either to the left or to the right. The third uh, isomer is probably going to be an EZ isomer. Uh, we'll have a look at that when we make it. Name and outline a mechanism show how one of the alkenes is formed. So we've got a double bond um, and it's... Uh, uh, a mechanism. The mechanism type is going to be elimination because you're removing water, taking water, eliminating water from something. Explain how this reaction can lead to the formation of these three alkenes. Okay, so removal of water is elimination for a start. Let's have a look at the mechanism. The first thing to remember is that um, sulfuric acid, all acids make H+, and you need H+, in the mechanism, not H2SO4. You don't want the full formula of the sulfuric acid, just H plus for sulfuric acid in the mechanism. The butan-2-ol has a lone pair of electrons on the O of the OH, which is going to attack the H plus. Let's have a look at the mechanism then. So we've got a lone pair of electrons on the OH of butan-2-ol. So four carbons in the line. The OH is at carbon number two, and I've got a lone pair of electrons there on the OH. It attacks the H plus from the sulfuric acid. When it does that, then the electrons are moved onto the H plus, and it... Uh, it uh, neutralizes, takes away the H plus, the plus of the H, because the electrons, which are minus, are transferred onto the H plus, or bonded to the H plus, and that removes the H plus. The O has had electrons move away from it, and therefore that becomes plus. So this becomes O H H, because the O was bonded to that H, and it's got another H, so it's OH2, or you could write it as OHH as a displayed formula, and the plus is on the O, because electrons have moved away from the O. Now what actually happens is, this is ready to be released as water, so the bond breaks on the COH2+, plus. the bond breaks and goes on to the plus of the oxygen, that's going to break off H2O, and the plus disappears off the oxygen because electrons have been moved from the bond onto the plus and it neutralizes it. So that will make water. At the same time, this carbon then, if we're not careful, is only going to have three bonds, one, two, three, because this bond's broken. So the H of an adjacent carbon um, breaks off and the electrons move between the two carbons, and then that will be released as an H+. Plus. And that means that the sulfuric acid remakes the H+, plus, um, and so it's actually a catalyst in this reaction, and the double bond will be here. So that will, in this case, make but2-ene. But for carbons, uh, the OH2 plus disappears as water, the H disappears as H+, plus, and so we're just going to end up with four carbons with a double bond in between carbons 2 um, and 3, so it's but2-ene. This way, so what I mean is, instead of that H being broken off, if one of the H's to the left were broken off, um, then the double bond would be here. So if I had a H here and that released electrons into this uh, between carbons number 1 and number 2, the double bond would be between carbon number 1 and 2, and it would make but one in so if the H were to go from the left. Because uh, H can go to the left or the, be released from the head, from the left or to the right of the, where the OH is, either from this carbon number one or this carbon number three. Uh, and that will create two different structural position isomers, but1ene and but2ene. But2ene, by the way, 
has, if you consider it, it's got a double bond with no free rotation, and to the left of the double bond I've got a C with an H and a C with a CH3, so I've got two different groups to the left of the double bond, and I'll have a CH3 and an H to the right of the double bond, so I'll have um, two different structural isomers. I'll have both with the CH3s on one side, a Z isomer of butuene, and one where a CH3 will be on the top, where it will be above, and one where it will be below, um, on opposite sides of the carbon to carbon double bond, and that would be my um, E isomer. So butuene forms as a mixture of EZ isomer, along with two positional isomers, but1ene and but2ene.